So in the first video I told you that this whole series is inspired by Ready Player One and the world of the Oasis. And since we're building this game step by step together, here's where you come in. I need your help coming up with a name for this game. Share your best ideas in the comments below. Something creative, something bold. Imagine seeing your idea attached to this project as it grows. Now, in today's episode, we are adding a new class that inherits from the character class. We'll check out all the built-in methods it gives us, and then we'll create our first blueprint to bring our player character to life. And before we jump in, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss the next steps in this journey. Also, head over to Woolen.com to learn more about the Game Creator Accelerator, because technical skills are only half of the story. The other half is about connecting with an audience, getting noticed by studios and recruiters, and building a plan for independence in the mid and long term. You can even start today by taking my free training, How to Become a Game Changer Video Game Creator After Your Daily Job. The link is in the description. All right, let's get back into Unreal and start shaping our player character. So we're back in the project of Oasis. And before continuing with the rest, uh, by default, when Unreal, with this project is loaded, I get this scene. And I want to change this quickly because the scene that I want to load is the map one. Go to edit, project settings, and look for the section of maps and modes. Here inside default maps, you have the editor startup map and the game default map. For both of them, I want to use map one at this moment. So because I have it selected here, I can use this button and automatically I will add it. Or you can also select it from here. I find out that this method is much, much easier. Now I want to add a character class for the player that I'm going to use. So go to the folder of Shooter Oasis, in our case, right click and select new C++ class. In that, select the character class. Go next, and let's name this shooter character, and leave the path as it is. Create class. If you go back to your Visual Studio project, this will be prompted to you. Select the option of reload all, so we can add this new class. After a few seconds, you will see your class here. This is the header and the implementation file. And if you go to the Git changes, you will see the class and the two corresponding files as well that were added. Let's quickly review the different sections, but also keep in mind that I will leave you in the description a link to a series I created where I explain all these elements in more detail. The first part, the generate divided and the U class, well, here you are basically yelling to Unreal, hey engine, this is not just anybody, this is an official U class, stamp and certify, treated like a royalty in the world of reflection and blueprints. That's telling to C++ that this will, work, this will work in the world of Unreal. And the generated body is like saying, don't worry, Unreal, I filled out all the boring HR paperwork for this guy, and you can use it. These are basic things that you have to do every time that you declare a class that will be used in Unreal. And of course, we are children of the class character, and this is the name of our class, which is the shooter character. The A is added by Unreal. The next part is this public section related to the constructor that has the same name of the class that you created. And this is the birth moment of your character. And here you define all the things that needs before starting playing with that. If these were the themes, this is when you choose uh, the hair color, uh, you give them weird shoes, you give them, I don't know, any other kind of characteristics. And keep in mind that Unreal calls it every time you spawn this hero into existence. Then we go to the protected section and the begin play. This is where we're going to set things like the weapons, health, or maybe an awkward hello that you want to play at the moment of beginning to play with this character. Then we get to the other public section and we start with the tech. Again, another overwrite. The tech is the heartbeat. 
Unreal calls it every single frame. Imagine that your character constantly checking the watch. It's like, okay, it's been 0 0.0167 seconds since the last frame. What should I do now? Should I breathe? Should I aim? Should I reload? Without this part, your character will just stand around like a walk statue. And then we have the setup player input component. This is where your character learns to listen to you. Uh, when you use the WASD, the jump, the shoot, the dance, without this, your character is going to look at you without knowing what to do, even if you press all the keys on the keyboard. And then we have the implementation file, but at this moment, we are not going to touch anything. Let's go back to Unreal. And before continuing, remember that in Unreal, you have the option of compiling your project using this button. I prefer to use this button much more than using Visual Studio. That's my preference. Sometimes uh, Visual Studio provides me with errors that are not really errors and Unreal understanding very, very easily. And if I have any error, I can also take it from this log and then go back to Visual Studio. Now I want to create my first blueprint based on this class that we just created, the shooter character. First, I want to add a new folder where I'm going to place my blueprints. And as you can imagine, I'm going to call this, at least for the moment, blueprints. Go back to the shooter oasis and now right click on the shooter character class and look for create a blueprint class based on shooter character. Because this is a blueprint, well, first off, let me go to my folder. And because this is a blueprint, I'm going to call it a base shooter character, and I'm going to finish with BP. Just because sometimes it's easier to find files based on this terminal, this end, BP. And now create shooter character. Let's close a moment this. You will see now that in our folders in Blueprints, we have the base shooter character. The interrogation is because the revision control, the version control is checking this new element and still don't know what to do with this. Don't worry, we're going to solve that in a second. If I try to open the Blueprint by double clicking on it, you will see that the window gets over the other window. This is something that I really uh, don't like. I, it is very annoying. To solve it, go to Edit, Editor Preferences, look for Appearance, and inside, look for Asset, Editor, Open Location. And from the list, pick the main window. Close it. And now, if I try to open the Blueprint, it's a stick to the main window, which I really prefer a lot. Now. Once the blueprint is open, select this option, open full blueprint editor. And we're going to handle these details later on, but at this moment, just go to the section of viewport. The first thing I want you to realize is that you remember that we created base shooter based on the class name shooter character. So if we select class settings, you can see what is the base class that you use to create this blueprint, which is shooter character, the same one we have here. It is not going to be the parent of this class. It is going to be the class that you use. Now, because the shooter character, as you remember in the header, is a children of the class character, it inherits some properties. And the properties that we inherit are the ones presented in these components. That is why you might asking, where did you get these components, Tony, if we haven't set anything here? Well, we haven't set it here, but they were set on the character class. In the viewport editor, similar to when we are in the map on a level, you can click Alt and left click and move around this capsule, which is this component we have here. When you select it here, it looks like in yellow because that's the one that you have selected. This is the base component to create your character. If you don't use this one, probably you move through the door, through the floor 
until the infinite. Then you have the arrow component, which is this arrow you see here. And that gives you a reference of where is the front of this actor. Then we have the mesh, which will be associated with the skeletal mesh that we will use for our character. That cool character that we play with in our video game. As you can see at this moment, in the skeletal mesh, we don't have anything. This is part of the process. Don't worry, guys, we get there. And finally, we have an interesting component, which is called the character movement. The character movement sets a lot of properties related to the movement of the character. And you can see things like gravity. You can see things like the step height that, that you can climb up, 45 degrees in this case. I recommend you to give a look to these properties because the goal of using Unreal is that you don't have to reinvent things. Is that you use the classes and the properties and the method that they have to make your work easier. That's why I love Unreal. Every time you make a change on this blueprint or in any blueprint, you will have the option to compile. At this moment, it is already compiled and then save. I want to go to the map though, because I want to make a change on the game mode that we created. Open the game mode and you see that we have several properties that we can set here. We talked about that in the previous lesson. And one of them is the default pawn class. Because we are now having our own class, our default pawn, we're going to select it. So you have two options to select it. You can pick it from the list or control spacebar, look for the blueprint, and then click here. Now we are assigning our own character that we are creating. And look now that the compile is in yellow. So click compile. It is green, which everything, which means that everything was okay and safe. If I try to play the game at this moment, I can move. And if I use shift F1 and detach, you will see that we have this character, which is the default pawn. This is not the, the pawn that I want to use. So why this is happening? If we go to the edit and go to the project settings and look for maps and modes, we'll see that the default game mode that we are using is set to known. We are not using the, the, the game mode that we created. So let's use our default game, our shooter game mode. Select it here and click on this button. Now we have it. Excellent. Now, if I play the game and I try to move, nothing happens. Well, the reason why this is happening is because, let me stop the game, is because we haven't set the player input component. And this is the one that controls the actions that will be, that will, you will introduce or through your keyboard, through your mouse or through your gamepad and that generates something, some action in the game. Because we haven't set the implementation of this section, of course, nothing is happening. Now, you can also try to play the game, and let's use Shift F1 to detach, and you can see the capsule of your player. So why I'm not seeing the capsule? Stop it. Go back to the base shooter character, BP, select the capsule component, and in the details, look for hidden, hidden in game. As you can see, this capsule is, won't be rendered while you are playing the game because this is check. So let's uncheck this, compile, save, go to the map, try to play, you can see the capsule there, but if you click Shift F1 and detach, then you can see it even more clear. So nothing's working, but we're going in the right direction. Remember that we're starting from scratch, from zero, guys, to cover everything about this game that I hopefully you're going to play and enjoy, but also that you can use as inspiration to create yours. 
And that wraps up part two of building our third person shooter from scratch in Unreal Engine. We created a child class of character, explored the inherited methods and components, and set up our very first blueprint for the player character. Step by step, the foundation of our game is coming to life. Now make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss the next part of this series. And remember, drop a comment with your best ideas for what this game should be called. I love to hear your creativity. Finally, continue your transformation. Take my free training, How to Become a Game Changer Video Game Creator After Your Daily Job. Just visit Woolen.com. The link is in the description. Until next time, keep creating, keep sharing, and most importantly, keep dreaming big. I'll see you soon, my fellow creators.